Hello. Today we're talking about how the adrenal gland responds to stress. So this is what actually happens as we go through life. We talked in the last video about what the gland is and the components of it. This is how do they respond as we go through our life. So the stages of adrenal fatigue, and this is really just the stages of how much stress are we under. So if we have some stress, a short-term stress, uh, these are the things we think of as good stress. We get ready for an athletic event and we push really hard, we compete, <sighs> it's over, the stress drops, we get to recuperate. So that flare-up of stress, and the, what that is, is it says brain gets motivated, sends the message down to the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland, if this is a life and death thing, it cranks out adrenaline. Okay, most of what we deal with nowadays is not so much life and death, and so what we do is we crank out cortisol. And the cortisol comes in and it makes sure our body's primed for the physical activity. And we use reserves to perform at our best for this high intensity moment. Then we recuperate. And the important part here is we recuperate. So we talk a lot about stress and we all think about, okay, the things that happen to us. Well, the things that happen to us have really big impact if we don't respond well. And a respond to a big stress is a big recuperation. So that we stress the alarm stage, we respond, then we recuperate, we relax with friends, we laugh. Stress up, stress down, that's an acute stress, perfect. Now, we'll talk about the, the, how we can measure this, but this is step one of our stress response. Step two of our stress response is when the stress sticks around. And so now, instead of peaking for an event, a performance, uh, getting on stage, doing a presentation, uh, a work performance, anything short term, now the stress sticks around. And so instead of having us stress and recuperate, now we stress and we stay stressed and the adrenal gland keeps cranking. And as that adrenal gland keeps cranking, we start to not be able to recuperate so much. And now we're having to dig deeper into our reserves that we're not supposed to touch very often. And as long as eventually the stress eases and we can recuperate, this is still a, a hard response, but we can handle it. When it becomes true adrenal fatigue and we get really exhausted with this, it's because that stress went up and then it stayed up and then it stayed up some more and we have done everything we can to dig into our reserves so that we can keep functioning. And sooner or later, the gland just gets tired and says it can't keep making cortisol at such a high level without there being consequences and where we suppress other parts of the body. Now what that means is over here, there's, we're going to talk about three hormones. One is DHEA, and DHEA is a building block on which we make cortisol and we make our other sex hormones, and that cortisol uh, the DHEA, if we make too much stress hormones, if we make too much cortisol, what we end up doing is we have to steal away the DHEA that could have come over here and made sex hormones for us, so that it would have given me the estrogen and progesterone that I need at real low levels to have a good, stable function and normal balance, or for a woman to have enough testosterone so that she can have hormonal balance in her body. And for a postmenopausal woman, and this is a really common problem, a postmenopausal woman to have any of her sex hormones, the estrogen, progesterone that she needs to help tape, make that a easier transition for her. So high stress means we take all the DHEA and we pull it down here and to make even more cortisol and we get almost no hormones left over to make the sex hormones or to control the kidney gland. So when this happens, we get all this cortisol and we get the chronic symptoms that we'll talk about on our next video. And we start making less of these and we get moody and we get irritable. And we start getting high blood pressure because we're not controlling the kidneys well anymore. And so that chronic high stress, the exhaustion stage is when this is all going here. So when we do some lab testing, we can do some very straightforward lab testing where we do sal salivary samples where we take your saliva four times a day four times a day. And we watch and see how much DHEA is in there and how much cortisol is in there and is it being released at, released at the right time. In the early stages of alarm stage, we get a jump up in our cortisol. So we get a lot of cortisol, 
the DHEA, we've still got plenty of reserve, so it's no problem. We just use the DHEA we've got. Great, no problem. If we get over here into the resistance stage, cortisol stays up because we're still handling the stress. And so some of us, we get cocky and we think, I'm so good at stress, it just doesn't even affect me because we're still making plenty of cortisol. But we've been doing it so long now that now we're having to steal DHEA from, that should go over here and now we're keeping it in cortisol. So yes, we're handling it, but it's starting to affect us. And it's gonna affect our moods, it's gonna affect our temperament, because now we don't have this going over here giving us balance. And it's gonna start affecting our blood pressure. But because we got plenty of cortisol, we still feel good. In this last stage, the exhaustion, now we don't have enough DHEA to keep this channel being fed, or keep this being fed. So now we have low DHEA, and low cortisol and now we feel horrible because cortisol without the cortisol we can't respond to the next stress and so the next stress that comes along it's an irritating person life's full of those okay we can't handle that anymore it's too much noise life's full of that we can't handle that anymore and that puts us into this exhaustion stage where everything is too much and that's this is what it looks like on the lab tests is low cortisol low DHEA and then if we can't rebuild that, there are ways to rebuild the cortisol and recuperate. But if we don't do that, then these two stay down. And then eventually we see the body just quits making cortisol and the DHEA starts to come back. But we have lost our ability to make cortisol because we don't have enough other building blocks. So there's a way we go about recuperating from adrenal exhaustion. And that's to remove as many other stressors as possible and feed the adrenal gland. We'll talk about that more on another video. But this is what happens as we go through our daily stress. So to recap, it's just we have a short-term stress, we recuperate, that's actually a good thing for us. It's just like exercise. We go out and we exercise, we exhaust ourselves, and then we recuperate and the next day we're stronger. That's this. Resistance is when we are doing too much, we start overtraining, our stress levels are, we're, we're no longer able to grow from our stress. And then down here is when we're just toast and, and even the smallest thing can push us over the edge. This is the process we all go through and it just depends on where do we catch it and where do we stop digging ourselves into a deeper hole.